It's Eric Richardson, and we're talking about confidence. Now, really, there are two ways in which we can develop confidence. The one is kind of a non-skills-based method, and the other one is much more skills-based. So we need to recognize these two different approaches. Self-esteem is positively linked to self-confidence, meaning that as we develop our levels of self-esteem, so too will our self-confidence grow. Yet self-esteem has less to do with how you perform or your level of skill. It's simply an evaluation of yourself, how you see yourself. Self-esteem is the belief in your own worthiness and your capabilities. And self-esteem really is a positive predictor for self-confidence and lowered levels of anxiety. Now, of course, we all have limiting belief programs. Many of us are aware of them, but oftentimes we are not. Limiting beliefs at the most basic part of our thinking will influence our self-esteem as well as our self-confidence. Why? Because we see the world through these beliefs. They are like colored glasses, and so we're seeing the world through tinted glasses. And one of the beliefs could be, I am stupid. Another might be, others don't like me. And generally, we're motivated by a need to confirm that the way we see the world is actually how the world is. And this means we tend to focus on external proof that supports our beliefs. And we tend to dismiss facts that actually don't support our beliefs. So these beliefs influence how we behave, which often leads to a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. So if people think we are stupid, we may behave in a stupid way and get feedback from them uh, that confirms, well, people think I'm stupid. If we believe that others don't like us, we might not go to a party because already we've set ourselves up to fail at the party. And so we distance ourselves from other people, thereby confirming in some way that people don't like us. And we make this kind of belief program real. So it's really important to recognize then that the belief programs or your underlying belief programs are having a strong impact on your self-confidence. They can be making it hard for you to collect new experiences that actually help to build your self-confidence. So when it comes to the non-skills-based approach, what we realize here is that we are working with things like affirmations. I am confident. I know what it feels like to be confident. I have a healthy self-esteem. I know what it feels like to have a healthy self-esteem and so on. In Theta Healing, we can bring in some of this using what we call downloads. But in short, we're not necessarily going into training, as it were, to become more confident. We are literally working with our feelings and we're working with our belief programs. And from there, we are developing a stronger sense of self or what some might call a healthy ego strength. One of the most tangible ways of increasing your self-confidence is to actually build skills. If we are wanting to build or increase our general confidence, one of the things that we should do is to become really good in a couple of things. And this means we need to be good at something like sports or art, cooking, giving massages, memorizing poetry or facts video editing, uh, reading books, or whatever it is that we do a lot of the time and actually enjoy. Being good in several things positively affects your general confidence. And that general confidence could give you the building blocks then to do some other things which are outside of your comfort zone. In other words, as you develop your general confidence, your ability to handle situations and problems in the world also tends to increase and you become much more comfortable in diverse situations.